horses dance, fish jump, and nature unfolds unending surprises from yesterday to today, calling to you. Kentucky, what you've been looking for, call 1-800-225-TRIP. Set for tip off, Harlan and Casey County. Harlan in the white uniforms, Casey County in the blue. Harlan at 32 and 5, and Casey County 24 and 11 coming in tonight. And the Green Dragons on St. Patrick's Day will get the first crack at it. This is Mike Jones, number 14, with the jumper that rims out. Got tipped outside, and there's Mark Switcher with it for Casey County. We'll set the lineup for you as we go. This is Jones with the steal. Off the glass, no good. Rebound to Casey County. Well, pretty furious pace here to start us off. You gotta love it, guys. Boys Sweet 16 basketball. This is Darren Wall firing for three for Casey County. Comes out of there, and Charles Thomas, the fine sophomore, off with it for Harlan, number 22. Driving for Harlan is Casey Lester, and there's the first two of the game. Well, guys, keep in mind, all night long, you're going to see Lester doing that. He averages 12 a game, and he's only a freshman. Look for big things from that young man. 2-0 Harlan. 33 is Darren Wall. Over to 20, Mark Butcher for Casey County, driving the lane. And the rebound to Thomas. Thomas stops and fires. And the three-pointer oh. stays in. A little shooter's roll there for Charles Thomas. He averages 21 points a game. He's only a sophomore. Darren Cundiff across the line for the Casey County Rebels of Coach Jack Stanford. Harlan coached by Mike Jones, the father of number 14, Michael Jones. Shot from the lane draws nothing but air. That was Mike Barra who took the shot. Now Butcher drives the baseline, doesn't get the layup. Rebound fought for and put back up and in by Butcher. Well, Butcher's certainly aggressive so far, Dan. You gotta like what he's doing. All right, that's right, Moore. You'll be seeing a lot of Butcher and Baird both taking the ball to the hole very well as they're good ball handlers and good shooters off the move. Butcher had 29 in the regional final. Here's Jones off the left side, not there. They get Lester with the long shot. Now it's Todd Cox with the follow. His shot's not good, and they get the first foul of the ball game on Casey Lester, number 10 of Harlem. Well, that time Barrett had good position underneath. He got his hand on the ball, was looking up floor to try to run it, and he picked up a foul there against Harlan. So good rebound in position on there for Casey. Darren kind of handling the ball. We also have Mark Butcher, Mike Barrett, Rance Barrett in there for Casey County. Here's the ball tipped outside. Jones, or Thomas rather, went after the steal. And now Casey County will have it in offensive court, trailing 5-2 to two for the Harlan Green Dragons. Well, we'll have to watch Harlan. There's been some ankle injuries on that team. Uh, Thomas and Jones and Cox all suffering ankle injuries throughout the season, so we'll see how they hold up. Driving for the basket. There's the shot by Bear. Not good. Here comes Harlan. This is Thomas. Shot to miss, but we'll get a foul on Mike Barrett on the rebound. That time Barrett just a little too over anxious. He just went up over top of the back. He's got to get that good position to be able to pull down that board. Harlan on offense. There's Jones out of the corner. Three-point try is short, and Barrett. Mike Barrett off with the rebound for Casey County. Driving is Baird, calls for step. Score holds it 5-2. Well, Harlan coming out shooting the ball quite a bit. You know, they had a 91, what was it, 91-81 game against Corbin in the regional finals. Real close contest right down to the wire. Might have been 99-89, actually. Right. It was a very, very close game, but they shot a lot of threes. Look for more and more of that as the game goes on. Lester along the baseline gives the Cox for the basket. That's a great pass that time. Todd Cox wide open underneath. He's a big 6'7", 200-pound sophomore. Cox is one of the state leaders in field goal percentage through most of the regular season. Driving is Barrett off the butcher. Good defense by Thomas, but now a foul. I tell you what, that was a real good pump fake there by Butcher to get his man up in the air and draw the foul, and he'll be shooting two. See how he just kind of gets the ball right there. He's going to pump one, 
He's going to get his man in the air. Boom. Picks up the foul. Just a good heads he play there by number 20, Mark Butcher. So Butcher steps to the line. He has the only two points for Casey County thus far. Coach uh, Mike Jones of the Green Dragons over there observing his team tonight. He's got his son Mike Jones playing for him out there. Michael Jones, a junior, averaging 21 a game for Harlan. This is Butcher hitting both. He has all four for Casey County. It's 7-4 Harlan, and Casey County applies the press. And the ball goes back to Casey County. They got a good look at that call along. Goes back to the Rebels. Butcher against Lester. Now there's the shot by Baird, and Rance Baird drains it from the baseline. And once again, that combination of Butcher to Baird, successful all season. And the foul in backcourt as Michael Jones faced the pressure from Casey County, and that one will be charged to Darren Wall. You know, you want to watch Casey County here. They got four seniors on their starting lineup. They're very experienced at this, and the press is going to really potentially wear a young Harlan team down. The experience play a big factor here, Morris. Yeah, you know, uh, Harlan only started one senior on this team. So, amazing, they made it this far without a whole lot of experience. Awful lot of talent, though, and this is Charles Thomas handling the ball right now. Now to Jones. Inside, along the baseline, Lester drops it in. Nice pass oh, to I just left him open that time. You know, that's just a little eight-foot uh, uncontested shot there. 9-6, Harlan on top. Then moved by Baird, gets it in off the glass. Well, I tell you what, that time he had an incredible reverse move. Swing it to the left side of the glass here. Put it off nicely. And there's the steal by Baird. Casey County on the run. Baird stops and misses the shot. Butcher follows. Butcher's everywhere. The guy is everywhere. I'm really impressed with him so far in this first quarter. And the near steal, you can see uh, Al Pruitt handling the ball. Former Henry Clay coach doing some radio work tonight and has good hands on that one. Casey County has captured the lead, 10-9, and Harlan handling the ball. Well, Casey County fans on their feet cheering their team on to defense right now. They want to see somebody stop these Harlan Dragons. The Green Dragons from Harlan. Pass out of bounds back to Casey County. Well, Casey County has come alive after a slow start. Good idea to try to get it inside that time. I just uh, missed the bounce pass that time. Casey County following a 24 and 11 season in the Sweet 16. There's a collision as Darren Wall drove to the basket, and the foul will go against Charles Thomas, number 22 from Harlan. That's his second. Well, that's a tremendous advantage, Keith, to having a guy. You know, like Rance Baird down there because they're all the defense is looking at him and it gives Wall a chance to penetrate when Baird clears out, really opens things up, makes good good news for the rest of the Casey County players. Coach Mike Jones uh, has to pull Charles Thomas from his lineup, replaces him with Kevin Hudson. That's wearing number 12 in white. And I'm sure that Mike Jones did not want to make that move this early in the ballgame. An interesting matchup since tonight's game is going to be Baird underneath. He's matching up pretty strongly right now against Stacy Simpson from Harlan. A lot of pushing going on underneath. We'll see if the referees get on top of that or if they let him play. Jones from outside. And the rebound to Butcher. Down the middle he goes. Doesn't get the layup. And the rebound to Lester. Almost a steal from Jones, but he recovers. Butcher now two of five from the field, but he does have two free throws, and he's got four rebounds, so he's been all over the place for Casey. There's a whistle, and the foul will go against Darren Wall of Casey County, his second and the team's third. Probably pretty close to the vest on the outside there against two fairly physical teams. Look for some of those calls on the inside, too, as well as both teams jockey for position. Once again, a key matchup is going to be Baird, and on defense, Baird is actually picking up when he's in there, Jones, but also as well, Todd Cox. And 
time. They get an official timeout, and they're checking the jersey of Todd Cox, who may have received a cut. Yes, he did. You can see the elbow bleeding, and under the new rules, of course, uh, any presence of blood has to be taken care of with the removal of that player from the lineup temporarily. Well, I did say things were physical, but I wasn't sure they were quite that physical. Jeremy Simpson into the ball game for Harlan, replacing Cox. Jeremy Simpson wears number 40. Well, Harlan really does a lot of off-the-ball picking. I mean, they're picking hard. Nice pass along the baseline to Simpson, and the shot missed and tapped outside. Harlan gets it back. Well, good to see Simpson get involved right away. Good little uh, pass there by Michael Jones down low. Give him, give Simpson a little confidence as they uh, start off here. 2.10 to go, first quarter. Shot out of the corner, missed by Jones. He can't quite find the range on his three-pointer. Driving is Switcher, a collision and a foul. Boy, he really takes the ball to the hole well. And again, that little pump fake, I don't know if we can see that again, but that pump fake really, really does a lot to get the defensive player up into the air, and he picks up that foul. A very, very hedgy play there by number 20 for Casey County, Mark Butcher. Butcher to the line for a pair. He's perfect from there, and now he misses. Now he's not perfect anymore. He's two for three now. Butcher could really know how to draw a foul. I mean, he'll lean in on you, and he'll uh, get a little body on you, but if you're not set for it, they're going to call it on you every time. Second shot good, and it's 11-9, Casey County. Boy, they got the Casey County fans here in support, don't they? Almost a steal in backcourt. Harlan recovers. They're still not across. Now they are as Hudson brings it into offensive court. Shot from the baseline. Not there. Once again, he made a good penetrating move to the baseline. Just a little bit long on that shot. Maybe a little too much excitement here. Dropped off a Casey County player. No harm done. They'll get the ball underneath. Comes into Hudson. Minute 35 to go, first quarter. And the foul whistled out above the key. Adam Davis picks up the foul for Casey County. Michael Jones back in for Harlan. There's Davis who got the foul. That's his first in the team fourth. Give a lot of credit here to Coach Jones from Harlan County. Put in an awful lot of freshmen here. He's played with them all year long, the running gun type of team. Blanton just being replaced there. Only our freshmen did a good job in the filler spot there as the point guard. And it goes to Lester. His shot blocked. Picked up by Simpson. His is blocked, but a foul on Butcher. Well, Butcher, again, really active on both ends, defensively, offensively. Looked like he had a, a close to a clean block that time. Well, you can see here when the ball goes in bounds, he comes across and he'll get up in the air and squat it away, but just caught part of his arm and once again in disbelief. But Jeremy Simpson hits the free throw, his first scoring of the night. Second one's also there, and we're all even, 11 all with a minute 25 to go, first quarter. Both teams, I think, starting to settle down now. Everybody's a little tight when they first play in Rupp Arena, but both teams starting to do what they do best. Butcher fakes and drives and gets the basket. I tell you what, he has got some incredible body control, and if they don't go with him, he's going to put it in, and if they do, they're going to foul him. So he's really commanding the force out there. Lester leading the Harlan break. Stops with a jumper and hits it. That's a nice little delicate touch. You know, he's leaning in there. That's a, so a soft little difficult uh, touch shot, and he buried it. Six points for Lester. We're even again at 13 inside the last minute. Jump shot by Barrett is missed. And now Harlan's going to take its time with 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Michael Jones will come up across the midcourt strike. Jones, a really heady point guard, doing a very good job outside controlling this offensive team. Really making sure that they get the right shots as they try to hold it out here with 25 seconds to go in the first quarter. Jones again handling the ball. 20 seconds left. Team really a different makeup without Charles Thomas in the lineup. 
Hudson's in there. Seven seconds left. Jones under pressure. Looking for a shot. Now goes along the baseline. There's a shot by Lester. It's jammed. And we've run out of time. At the end of the first quarter, we're all even. Casey County 13 and Harlan 13. Back with the second quarter in just a minute. Things are not always as they appear. Of course, Lexington Billiards has the finest in pool tables, made by Brunswick, the number one name in billiards. But at a closer look, you find we have elegant solid oak bars and tools in a wide range of finishes and fabrics. Dart boards, dart accessories, game tables and chairs, air hockey, and jukeboxes, both vintage 50s models as well as reproductions. Come in today and let the friendly people at Lexington Billiards help you make your home game room complete. It's the NBA on TNT with new stars on the line. Young Guns challenging the league's best. These are the players of tomorrow. These are the stars who will make the difference. These are the superstars who will rule this game. What? I don't think so. Well, maybe not who. Nobody plays the NBA like TNT. Nobody. Glaucoma doesn't give you any warning. Get your eyes examined. Don't lose sight of glaucoma. We are back for the second quarter. Keith Elkins along with Dan Williams and Maury Hill. And Casey County and Harlan dead even at the end of the first quarter. The Casey County fans having fun, as is everyone else right now, in an even ball game in the first quarter. Baird with the reverse and the shot. And Charles Thomas off with the rebound. Thomas with the miss. And Casey County going the other way with Pendant. Tried to go to Barrett. Now Look the ball out. recovered. And out to Thomas oh. for Harlan. He couldn't quite pick it up. Out of bounds. And he was looking to put that one down big time, Maury. That's too bad. That would have been a little show here for the Rough Arena fans. And we want to point out, too, we mentioned Todd Cox went to the sidelines because of uh, a cut a few moments ago, and that has caused him to change jersey. He's wearing number 52 for Harlem now. Right now we get number 30, Ronnie Parkman, into the ballgame for Casey County. Still even at 13. We're less than a minute into the second quarter of play. Butcher moving along that baseline and doesn't get the layup this time. Rebound to Thomas. Tell you what, they executed that near picture perfect. Just couldn't get the ball to go in the hole. Good ball movement that time by Casey County. Jones and Cundiff collided, and this time the foul will go against Cundiff. Just a little bump that time, a little body contact, and uh, almost could have gotten away with it, but the uh, referee caught him red-handed that time. And Cundiff, a gutsy, dip, gutsy defensive player. He got a good shot there of the coach there from... Casey County, Jack Stanford, cheering his team on, trying to get him out there and play a little tough D, trying to shut down the Harlan Green Dragon. And now an official timeout as we've got a player over on the Casey County sideline, that is Rance Baird. And Coach Jack Stanford with him. Coach Stanford in his eighth year at Casey County, 119 and 104. Record of 394 and 199 overall. Baird's going to have to leave. He doesn't appear to be seriously hurt, but whatever the problem is, he's going to have to leave for a moment. And we've got an official timeout in the meantime. Pleasure Ridge Park and Knott County Central have already advanced, and now we've got Harlan and Casey County to be followed by Graves County and Lexington Dunbar. Well, while we have a minute here, guys, Harlan's really done a great job at it's getting uh, uh, players isolated on offense and, and getting good quality shots. And they've uh, got four of their five starters shoot over 50%. So it shows you what a good job they've done on execution on the offensive end. I think we had a jersey change here. They're trying to match up with uh, Todd Cox for Harlan. Both teams seem to have a jersey swap. Number 24. Back in the ball game. Wearing number 24. This new rule is tough on announcers, I'll tell you yeah, that. For sure. We're not sure what the rule is, but... Uh, well, you have to, if, if there was a cut, and apparently there was in this case also, uh, 
blood on the jersey and has to be removed. But uh, for the high school, we'll stop on that necessitates a jersey change and a different number. Well, it's been a pretty physical game, Keith. You mentioned that. We had 11 fouls in the first quarter. So, uh, you know, look for both teams to go in the bonus here fairly soon. Hopefully no jersey changes, though. Underneath, there's the layup by Lester. Well, I tell you what, excuse me, Kate, Stacey Simpson is setting a screen high, and they're passing it right behind him and hitting the guy cutting down low. Harlan executing that near picture perfect. Looks, looks really sharp on offense. Been very effective against Casey County so far, right, Maury? That's for sure. There's the shot by Baird, and brought out of there by Thomas. It's a 15-13 Harlan lead. Outside shot by, uh, by Lester, got that three. Good looking shot there by Casey Lester. And there's a timeout on the floor with 6.19 to go in the second quarter and it's Harlan 18 and Casey County 13. We'll be right back. And Uncle Tom, these commandments were given. Thou shalt never serve a cold. Thou shalt never deliver a slow. Thou shalt always deliver free. Thou shalt never drop or smack the box. Follow these commandments and thou shalt get to pizza heaven. Tom is sharing a slice of pizza heaven with you. A large food topping pizza is only $6.35. Or an extra large food topping pizza is just $9.99. Heaven can't wait. Call Tom's Pizza now. Hey, this is it, guys. It's what we worked all season for. Let's get out there. from outside by Ronnie Parton, not there, and the rebound to Thomas. We've called that name several times. Stops for a three and doesn't get it. Rebound is saved in, though, and Thomas gets it back now. You know, it seems that Thomas would continue to move to his right when he shoots from his left. You'd think he'd be more comfortable going the other way, but he seems to be very comfortable going to his right. Jones moves in. Nice jumper by Michael Jones. Well, you can see why Jones scores 21 points a game. Between uh, he and Thomas and, uh, you know, you got Casey Lester and Stacey Simpson. This team is a very formidable team. First two for Michael Jones. The average is 21 a ball game. Outside shot by Wall is good for three. That's really a big three-point play there by Casey County. They cut the lead now to four. Uh, really a big difference without having Mark Butcher in the game because he's getting ready to check in. They really need his leadership out there on the court. Shot by Lester off the baseline. And the rebound to Casey County. Shot from outside is missed by Cundiff and rebounded by Todd Cox, who's now wearing 52 for Harlan. Twenty to sixteen is the Harlan lead. Four and a half minutes to go, first half. Thomas with an opening on the baseline. Nice left-handed shot. That's a way to take the ball to the basket. He didn't settle for the jumper. He took it strong to the hole and got a good screen. Also, right, Jones came down there and popped it over to Thomas, setting him up. Doing a good job leading the ball club this point at the three position. This is Wall from outside, hit a three a moment ago, missed that one. Rebound to Parton, six it in. Just a, just a good job on the glass that time, following up the missed three. Rebound came off a little bit deep, and he kissed it right off the glass for two. Under four minutes to go, first half. 22 18, Harlan. Three point try by Jones, too short. They really need to get him on track, Keith, for Harlan to, to stay the whole way here. He does average a lot of points. 
Sean Pierce drains a three for Casey County. Well, I tell you what, Casey County's not afraid to fire up that three. That time Pearson squared up and fired it up. The junior dropped it down. It was a good looking shot. And now we're back to a one point ball game. Cox inside, puts it in. Good pass that time. Again, they're getting it down low. They're having some success with that. Thomas the last time down the floor. And now this time Cox. So doing a good job getting it down low. Driving is Baird. Missed the shot. Partially blocked. And Harlan on the attack. Lester for three. Doesn't get it. Rebound bounces out in the corner and touched by Casey County, apparently. And there's Coach Mike Jones. His team up by three. They've led most of the way. Casey County has stayed close. Well, what an advantage if you're a, a coach to have a guy like Jones and Thomas that work so well together. The confidence you can have with that kind of floor leadership. You can see why they're 32 and 5. Barrett and Butcher back in the Casey County lineup. Jones, the reverse from the jump shot, won't go. Rebound to Barrett and out to Butcher. Goes all the way down, short jumper, not there. Rebound fumbled for a moment by Lester, but he gets it back. The Butcher had the right idea using the glass on the other end. Uh, you don't see a lot of people using the glass a whole lot anymore. Nice pass from Jones to Cox for the basket. Well, that time Mike Barrett for Casey County got caught on the back of his heels. Todd Cox slid right in there, put in the two. And the lead is back out to five for Harlan. Four assists now for Mike Jones in the ball game. Not scoring too much, but certainly getting the job done on offense with his assist. Three-point try by Pierce, not there, put back up by Butcher. He's so quick off that first step that you find him all over the floor, both offensively and defensively. He's gone to the basketball really well tonight. We need a team really boxing out very well at this point. A lot of loose balls being picked up. Look for that to change as time goes by. 26-23, Harlan. Inside it goes to Cox, and he was bumped from behind. A lot of pushing and shoving going on the inside. You know, you mentioned earlier, Todd Cox, a big guy at 200 plus pounds, only a sophomore. He gets that big old paw up there, and they're looking for him to hit him with that target. It's a big target to hit, too. Hudson back in the ball game, replacing Thomas for Harlan. That was the third foul on Darren Wall. So now we get Rand Baird back into the Casey County lineup, replacing Darren Wall, who's now wearing number 55. Well, you look at Todd Cox on the free throw line, and a little trivia on him. He's shooting 68% from the floor, which means, Dan, you're right, he is a big target, and they get the ball to him a lot, and he's probably getting a lot of shots underneath in close. I'm going to tell you what, and right now, after he drains that that free throw, there's nobody size-wise for Casey County to stay up against them. They're going to have to box him out and keep him off the board. It's a pair to make it 28-23. A minute 44 to go. Shot off the right side by Barrett. Not there and picked off by Jones. A lot of shots are, are short tonight for some reason. We've had uh, some three-pointers fall short and some twos. I think they're thinking about it a little bit too much. They just need to go down like they were when they were hitting those threes and just put them up with confidence. They'll drop. Harlan spreads the floor out. Minute 20 to go, first half. Again, Mike Jones likes to get an offensive player isolated. Lester took it down and had a chance for the follow-up shot and was fouled on the second drive. Yeah, that time Lester took it to the hole, he missed it, picked up his own board, went back up and got fouled by, uh, looks like Baird picked it up. It is on Baird. First on Baird. And it'll send Casey Lester to the line. Do you think since Baird switched jerseys, he gets 5,000 with each jersey, or does that just stay? Yeah. He probably wishes so, doesn't he? Here is Lester. Nice touch on the first one. Adam Davis back in the game for Casey County, number 31. Second one by Lester is also good. And now, Harlan has edged out to a seven-point lead, 30 to 23, as we come up on one minute to go in the first half. Inside the shot by Baird is good. 
I just to get a little turnaround. Actually, pretty good defense on him that time, but just found the range and knocked it down. This is Lester back outside to Jones. And they're going to try to hold it for one shot, or in other words, if they can penetrate and take a quick one, they will, but they're going to try to knock down these 35 six and not let Casey County get another run at it. Right now, content to work it outside. Hudson down the lane. He's going to take the shot, and he hits it. Well, they spread the floor nicely. That's, that's their whole strategy, spread the floor, get some isolation, make a quick move, and get open and take the shot. Dundas for Casey County. Got it off to Davis, who hits the shot with six seconds left. Here comes Mike Jones. He'll have to fire a long one up and does, and doesn't get it. It's off to the left. And we've come to the end of the first half of play with the score, Harlan 32 and Casey County 27. And we'll be back in just a minute. Put yourself into a different place. A wondrous vacation land of sight, sound, and celebration. An exciting, inviting place of moon bowls and waterfalls where horses dance, fish jump, and nature unfolds unending surprises from yesterday to today. Calling to you. Kentucky. What you've been looking for. Call 1 800 225 TRIP. Communication's tricky when you're hungry. Okay, I'll go. But nowhere fancy. Meaning nowhere expensive. Well, I want real food. Meaning no fast food. We want somewhere fun. Yeah. Meaning somewhere fun. Great. We'll go to two places then. Meaning Sizzler, a restaurant within a restaurant. A buffet court where you can do it any way you want it. And a grill where you can enjoy a variety of hot grilled entrees. Sizzler. Buffet court and grill, a restaurant within a restaurant. Meaning everyone's satisfied. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very close to officials. They, uh, they like me a great deal, and I'm very fond of them. If I had the choice of who would go on vacation with my best friends or officials, I would always rather go with the officials, because they value my opinion greatly. Uh, they always like to hear a little bit more of my opinion, and so I try to give it to them as much as possible just to be a nice person. <laughs> Brought to you by CMC, long distance that makes sense. Lexington Billiards, Kentucky Tourism, we've got what you're looking for. Tom's Pizza, and Fizzler, Buffet Court and Grill. Back at Rupp Arena, this is Keith Elkins, along with Dan Williams and Maury Hill. Glad to have you with us. Harlan leads Casey County at, at halftime. By a score of 32 to 27, Harlan the champion of the 13th region and Casey County champion of the 12th region. The Green Dragons came in with a record of 32 and 5. Casey County is 24 and 11, and Harlan on top by five here at halftime. Had a chance to talk with Al Pruitt, the coach of the, the 1983 state champion Henry Clay Blue Devils, before this game started, and let's hear what Al Pruitt has to say about this year's Sweet 16. I guess Al Pruitt is certainly no stranger to Sweet 16 tournament. He has participated in many as a coach and, uh, of course, had a long career at Henry Clay High School, including a state championship back in 1983. Al, what's, what's this event mean to you? Oh, this is excitement at its best, uh, Keith. I tell you, this March Madness, this is where March Madness all started. I think the NCAA picked up on it and it's got a lot of our cliches when you talk about March Madness. It's always been high school basketball here in the state of Kentucky. You know, I coached for 33 years, and 
now at Transylvania two years helping with Coach Don Lane and really enjoying it. And I think you really become a coach when you finally walk away with this big trophy. The word coach means something to you because it's the ring, the brass ring, that every coach in high school basketball reaches for. This is the big, and this is the one we all wanted to win. And when you finally get it, that word coach really means something to you. Well, of course, all these coaches are now in that spot going for the big award. How did your coaching strategy change through a week like this where you might see action uh, four times in a, a very short period of time? Uh, how do you try to approach that and get your players ready again for a completely different opponent in the next round? I think if you've got a chance to win the tournament and every team that all 16 of them in here have a chance, you have to be prepared, Keith, for the best team in the tournament if you want to win it. You can't just prepare for the first game. You've got to prepare in the three days, two days, or whatever it is leading up to the state tournament for the best team in the tournament. Who do you think you have to be to win it all? And then when you get in the game, you've just got to let things unfurl for you as a coach and as players. And if you're prepared to do that, then I think you can handle any eventuality. In 83, when we won it, we inserted what we called a Pac-Man defense. And we felt that the Pac-Man defense would stand us in good stead against teams of size and teams that we wanted to slow down because we like to run with basketball. So it did us a good job. We got into the final with uh, Carlisle County, and we went in three overtimes and finally won in a great score of 35-33. Great enough that night, I guess. Um, your impressions of the uh, first couple of games of this tournament and then also a uh, prediction, if you have one, uh, as to who would come out on top. Well, PRP was awfully strong today. They played a good Mason County team and beat them rather handily. They're very quick. I think that up there you'll have in the upper bracket Dunbar and uh, PRP in the final four, along with probably Mayo and the winner of the Christian County, Marion County game. All right, Al Pruitt has been my guest, and we'll be back with the second half tip-off in just a minute. Things are not always as they appear. Of course, Lexington Billiards has the finest in pool tables, made by Brunswick, the number one name in billiards. But at a closer look, you find we have elegant solid oak bars and stools in a wide range of finishes and fabrics. Dart boards, dart accessories, game tables and chairs, air hockey, and jukeboxes, both vintage 50s models as well as reproductions. Come in today and let the friendly people at Lexington Billiards help you make your home game room complete. And unto Tom, these commandments were given. Thou shalt never serve it cold. Thou shalt never deliver it slow. Thou shalt always deliver it free. Thou shalt never drop or smack the box. Follow these commandments and thou shalt get to pizza heaven. Tom is sharing a slice of pizza heaven with you. A large two topping pizza is only $6.35. Or an extra large two topping pizza is just $9.99. Kevin can't wait. Call Tom's Pizza now. Arena. Glad you've joined us. It's Harlan and Casey County with Harlan on top at the half, 32 to 27. And your impressions, for you of this first half? Well, so far so good, I guess, if you're Harlan. Uh, you got to be careful, though. Charles Thomas has got two fouls. See some of the first uh, half stats here. Field goal percentage, Harlan 12 of 31 for 31 percent. Casey County, on the other hand, 11 of 29 for 38 percent. Uh, free throws uh, perfect from the line there, six for six. And uh, Casey is 3 of 6 for 50% rebounding. Harlan's got somewhat of an edge there. And turnovers, uh, maybe a little generous, but Harlan County's got 4 and Casey County 3, Dan. Well, you're right. And one of the one of the reasons Casey County right now is trailing because really Barrett hasn't gotten on track. Rance Barrett usually averaging about 21 points a game. Doing a good job right now, but Butcher seems to be carrying more of that load. Look for Barrett to pick up the action in the second half and really help Casey County as they make a run at Harlan in the second half. Individual scoring was led by Casey Lester of Harlan, who had 13 in that first half, and Mark Butcher of Casey County had 11. Coach Mike Jones' team holding a five-point lead as we get ready to start the final two quarters of play, and then that'll be followed by Graves County against Dunbar. They all look appropriately dressed for St. Patrick's Day, and they have to like the way things are going so far, although it's far from over. That's right, you know, I tell you, uh, Mike Jones, I need to get him more involved. He's only got two points, and uh, he's one of the integral players here on this team. They're going to really need to get some production out of him in the second half here. Second half is underway. Mike Jones handling the ball in front court, and inside it goes to Cox. He walked that time, but he's been a factor underneath tonight. 
McCoy really has. And once again, Jones, while only having two points in the half, certainly doing a good job looking for the inside man. That time that big target just happened to walk a little bit on him. But giving that good, good paw out there certainly helps it. Casey County down by five. Butcher, who had such a good first half. And his pass is stolen away by Simpson. That time looked like Butcher telegraphed that one just a little bit. Harlan picked it up quickly. Stacy Simpson stepped in front of it. And the Green Dragons go on the offense. Jones looking. He's a fine passer, too. Found Cox underneath. Missed the short jumper. Rebound. Thomas oh. puts it in after the steal. Well, again, a uh, classic case of right place, right time. Uh, that time for Charles Thomas. Nine boards tonight for Charles Thomas, and there's a steal for him. Seven-point Harlan Lee. Thomas with the jumper. And the rebound off to Barrett of Casey County. Rebels quickly attack. And the follow shot by Butcher is good. Wall missed the original shot. Butcher follows for two. Well, Butcher's just uh, that scrappy, good ball player. Got the good, uh, quick first step. Had some good rebounds and uh, some good uh, fouls that he's drawn so far. Cox moves in. Missed the short jumper. And the rebound off to Barrett. Comes Butcher down the lane, takes a couple of times and gets the shot. Well, he's got some nice moves when he comes up on the dribble like that, and he just scored two more and has caused Harlan to call a timeout. 34 31 the score, 6 12 to go, third quarter. We'll be right back. Put yourself into a different state, a wondrous vacation land of sights, sounds, and celebrations. An exciting, inviting place of moon bowls and waterfalls. Where horses dance, fish jump, and nature unfolds unending surprises from yesterday to today, calling to you. Kentucky, what you've been looking for, call 1-800-225-TRIP. You know, Rick Patino always made, he said, his New Year's resolution to not swear. He always lost it in the first game after New Year's. I did the same thing with criticizing the officials on the year. I would make my resolution that I'm not going to do that anymore, whether they're right or whether they're wrong. I always lost it the first game. But now I can just sit down and enjoy it. And, and I do. I enjoy watching good basketball and good football, and I have that opportunity now, and I hope to do that a long time. <laughs> Back at Rupp Arena, Harlan prepares to put the ball in play and defensive pressure from Casey County. The Dragons break it with ease this time, but now the ball slapped away from Thomas from behind and out of bounds. Good defensive play by Butcher. Yeah, good recovery that time by Casey County, and uh, you don't want to let this Harlan team run free. Guys like Charles Thomas and Michael Jones can kill you. Three-point ball game. We went into overtime with the second game of the Sweet 16 tournament. Knox County Central winning that one. Here's a steal by Cundiff. And dishes it off to Barrett for the basket. That's just a great pass that time by Cundiff. Saw Barrett breaking down the left-hand side, dished it to him nicely, and that time it looked like Butcher picked up that foul. It was Butcher who picked up the foul. The lead has been cut to one, and that foul on Butcher is his second. And the first one on Casey County. In the second half, Butcher with 15 points tonight. Coach Jack Stanford, his club has drawn to within one. Jones off the baseline. Nice shot. That's good to see him get involved. Again, he's one of their scorers, and that's uh, just a little off balance uh, move to his left, which is really nice. That's a good sign for Harlan. If Jones gets on track offensively, could spell bad news for Casey County. He's just two for nine from the floor, but he's still looking for his shot. The fine shooter, they'll start dropping. And it looks like uh, Baird was on the sidelines, or rather Wall was on the sidelines. So it'll go back to Harlan. Thomas working against the backcourt defense. Bounce pass along the baseline, the fake, and the shot by Lester. He was fouled. Well, Thomas really handles that ball well. Uh, both hands equally as well, right hand or left. 
That time he took it down the left side, which is unusual for him because he has been going down the right side. Saw the open man in Casey Lester and hit him. We're going to see it again here as the foul takes place a little bit after that, but the pass was really key on that, really set up that offensive play. Kevin Hudson back in the ball game for Harlan as Todd Cox gets the rest. And also that was the fourth foul on Darren Wall, so he's going to have to leave the ball game. What Davis is in to replace Wall. We have, you pick up a little bit of quickness there in Davis, but you, you lose a lot on height there when Wall leaves the game. And certainly right now, Casey County needs somebody to battle on the board. Fortunately for them, it looks like Todd Cox right now is taking a breather. When he comes back in, good spell trouble. Lester hits the second. Lester with 14 points, and it's a four-point Harlan lead. There's Barrett with the short jump shot. It was short, and Har or Harlan's Charles Thomas brings it down. He slipped, got back oh. up, and hit the jumper. Well, coast to coast that time. Uh, actually, he didn't even have position on the rebound, but he skied up, got the board, went the whole length of the floor, and put it home. Coast to coast and underwater there briefly. That's right. Here. Here is Barrett with the shot off the right side. Nothing but air, but rebounded oh. and put in by Rance Baird. He'll get a chance for three. Oh, yeah, that was a good uh, good pump fake that time. He picked up the board coming underneath. Wasn't really in that great a position, but right place at the right time. He gets the foul and maybe gets a chance to knock down a three-pointer. Foul was on Stacy Simpson. Rance Baird with eight points tonight. Thirty-nine, thirty-six, and Cox will come back in for Harlan, replacing Stacy Simpson. Well, you don't lose a whole lot there. Stacy Simpson certainly playing a fine ball game, but you pick up two inches and forty pounds in Todd Cox. That's a luxury Coach Mike Jones has for Harlan. Harlan breaks the press. This is Thomas, and the jumper came back out on him. Cox battles for the rebound, but can't get it. Baird running for Casey County. Oh yeah. yeah. So, so very smooth that time with the finger roll. Good, good ball control. It's a one-point ball game, 39-38. Harlan on top. Casey County battling. There's the turnover as Thomas stepped on the end line, and Casey County will get it back with a chance to take the lead. Well, we might be seeing a little momentum swing here, guys. Casey County really is up the tempo here a little bit in the second half. We've seen them run out a couple times. Uh, if they can contain Thomas and Jones and, and run out a little bit, uh, we're going to have a dandy finish. Casey County crowd likes it. The Rebels have pulled back into this thing, and now Butcher with the shot that would have given them the lead. Cox chases it down in the corner. It's knocked away, but it'll go back to Casey County, and Butcher, hustling, has to climb back out of the crowd, but his team has the ball. Well, and the Casey County fans love it. They love the hustle of Butcher, and he's been everywhere tonight. Oh, pass flipped through Barrett's hands, picked off by Hudson. Got a good matchup there right in Jones and Butcher. Jones a little quicker. Jones to the baseline to Thomas. His shot's well short, and Baird comes out of there. A chance to take the lead here for Casey County. Driving is Cundiff all the way, oh. and Casey County does take the lead with 3.13 to go in the third quarter. That's just a nice looking drive. Put it up with the left hand, too. Shielded the ball nicely. And a foul in backcourt as Adam Davis was chasing Charles Thomas. Yeah, as usual, I don't think Davis can believe that, but he got caught trying to pick his pocket. But I tell you what, Moore, you're right. The momentum has really changed. And with Casey County going towards their own home end, and I mean that because the entire Casey County county is basically up in the <laughs> stand, it's a definite advantage. 40-39, Casey County in blue on top. Thomas stops and fires the jump shot. A foul on the rebound. And the call will go against Harlan. It's on Casey Lester. We're going to see him again go up and shoot that shot. Good position that time by Casey County. And you can see him coming over the back on that. Once again, a well-coached team. Coach Jack Stanford got to be pleased right now with the poise of Casey County Rebels. They lead by one. Adam Davis with it on the right side. And a walking call. 
as Baird moved into the middle. Well, travel that time, but you know, Casey County's got 13 points off of second chances, and I think that's where we've seen some of the momentum change, guys, is uh, they've done a good job of hitting the board. This time, Harlan breaks the press. Lester gets the basket. Once again, Jones to Lester. We've seen that all night long. Good-looking pass and a heady move by a freshman. Once again, soft on the shot. 41-40 as Harlan is back on top. Here's the shot by Baird. And the rebound. Thomas had it for a moment. Now Lester chases it down back to Hudson. Hudson takes it all the way down. Left hand oh, oh. for good and a chance for three. That's a big spark for Harlan. And, and you know, this, this whole game has really picked up. Everything stepped up a notch. And Hudson coming off the bench, giving him a good spark that time. Well, that time Hudson took it from one end of the court all the way to the other, dropped it into the baseline. He's going to have a chance for the three-point play. Foul was on Ronnie Parton. That is his first. There's Sean Pierce, who had a three-pointer back in the first half for Casey County. He's back in, replacing Adam Davis. Well, guys, what was once a one-point lead,